Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we're getting into the August tier list. That is right, guys. A couple changes to the tier list, but when we look at our heroes overall, this game has gotten massive. Now we started, I believe it was with 12 heroes with this, when this originally released um, four plus years ago. And at this point, the tier list in here are gigantic, which is the reason a lot of players were saying, hey, update the tier list. I'm trying to do it every single month, but again, in a normal month, we only have two heroes. Now I haven't done this through June. So we had July, we are looking at part of August. So we've had four heroes released. That is right, guys. We've seen some solid additions here. So let's hop over, look at tier list maker and we'll break this down. All right, guys, so just like we do in the past, we broke out and I dropped out the camera. There are so many heroes in here. I think I have all the icons. If I forgot a hero, let me know in the comments below because sometimes I do. We're gonna adjust this a little bit too, but I wanted to go through here and really break down um, some of the heroes and kind of the movement we've seen within the tiers. Now, looking over all utility, we have the Awakened version of Solus. I would probably move her down to this S tier. Just for the simple fact, we're not seeing quite the same utility out of her that we have in the past. And overall, I see the effectiveness of her kind of going down um, a little bit further and further as we continue through these tier lists, as we continue to make a little bit more progression and new heroes are coming out. Again, it doesn't seem like it is a monster priority in there. Now, some of the big priorities is, of course, the Awakened version of Belinda, guys, still the strongest hero within AFK Arena. Followed by probably Athelia. When you look at some team formations, um, Athelia does do incredibly well. We are still seeing the same resourcefulness with the Awakened version of Baden. We are also seeing it with Matria. So all of these still having a lot of plays, guys. But overall, hey, loss again, utility-wise, looking at a lot of different, um, different tiers, I would probably even move him down to the S tier and then taking Damia and dropping her up into this top tier would be my thoughts, guys. Again, the S plus tier, the S tier, the S minus tier, kind of these three, uh, the top three tiers are the primary heroes that you want in AFK Arena, and they're the primary heroes that you do want to build within AFK Arena. Now, the Awakened version of Brutus, I've, I'm kind of on the fence between the S plus and the S tier. I feel like he's going to be moving to the S tier, which again, guys, the S tier is super, super effective. Do not get me wrong, guys. They are still very, very strong in their own right. Also in the S plus tier, guys, I'm going to keep Grez up there just because, again, there are so many different game modes where Grez is still utilized, which is kind of crazy. Now, we also do leave Rem up there. Rem, super, super strong in her own right. Still, when you look at the heroes that are running formations, that are running teams in multiple game mode, it is this S plus tier, guys. When you look at Belinda, the Awakened version of Belinda, when you look at Athalia, when you look at Matria, Baden, when you look at Rem, those are all heroes that consist of a lot of their own tier and their own power. They, they pretty much run a lot of this. Now, Damia is getting a buff, which is going to be coming up, of course, tomorrow, August 1st. Um, I'm recording this on July 31st. Damia is getting a buff, which I believe is going to move her to that S+. Plus because her nine of nine furniture is getting a buff when it comes to the damage. And then if you checked out the video um, right there with Ivan, guys, Ivan, early game, mid game, even going into later game, Ivan is pretty broke. The hero overall has an incredible amount of utility, but the hero is pretty broke when it comes to the build and when it comes to, honestly, the overall utility of the hero itself. Now, looking at this S tier, we still have Joan and Amelia in here, absolutely. Um, support hero, and then of course the crowd control from Amelia is huge. Only in here, still providing the immunity for Belinda, providing the immunity for Baden, for Grez, for Rem, for whoever is in that formation. Um, Honest does another one, guys. Not seeing in a lot of utility with her anymore. Um, again, it, it seems like the S class is barely hanging on, might go to the S minus, um, but overall doesn't seem like in the Maulers, of course, huge priority. But when you think of, again, Twisted Realm, Nightmare Corridor, Cursed Realm, when you look at Treasure Scramble, um, not a lot of utility with the hero. Mishka, we're still seeing a ton. Scarlet, we're still seeing. Palmer, Lucretia, absolutely still within those formations. Lucretia, guys, still a priority. I mean, Lucretia was out, I believe, before even Ainz, um, which was an absolute game changer. But there's also rumor that we're going to have a Celestials and Hypogens drop in the next patch, so that is yet to be seen. But Lucretia still does have a lot of utility. Now, also with the tier list, remember, guys, 
Heroes like Lucretia is a super, super solid in a lot of different game modes. If you don't have all of these heroes built, if you don't have all of the S plus heroes built, Lucretia still fills an incredible amount of content, not only in the tower in um, campaign formations, but in a lot of different game modes, she is still the filler because she is such a powerful and strong hero. Nevi in here with the buffs, which is going to be interesting because with the new Mauler coming out with Nadia, um, if that buff's going to go on there, and also Ivan with the spirits, if they're going to get stronger, a lot to still be tested with this. Now, the Awakened version of Thane, again, PvP aspect. It seems like he is barely hanging on um, to this S slot. I feel like he's going to go to the S minus, probably with Brutus relatively soon. And you'll also notice, guys, the Awakened version of Sophia is at S could possibly be moving into S plus again, just because of the utility that we're still seeing with the hero. Now, Mortis and Silas, again, two still very, very big support heroes that work incredibly well. The twins still super unique with their abilities. The Awakened version of Sophia has worked herself into every single game mode at this point, including the Mauler Tower, but she is super important again for a lot of game modes. Um, same with Solus. It, it seems like, again, Solus is kind of dropping down a little bit. So the, the version one of the Awakened Heroes, it seems like the Awakened version of Thane, Brutus, and Solus are seeing a lot less utility than we have seen in the past. Now, of course, guys, Halos still being used for quite a bit. Instant buffer for Lucretia, instant buffer for Rem works well in formations. Getting into the S formation, I'm relatively keeping this one pretty much the same. When you look at here, a lot of the heroes are either strong support heroes or they are heroes that have a lot of utility in different game modes. So even looking here, Ainz and Albedo, again, go together like peanut butter and jelly. We say it all the time. Um, they are still utilized in a lot of AFK arena, similar to what we see with Lucretia. They still have a lot of viability. Um, overall, Albedo is still the one that a lot of players say to Garrison first. So picking her up first. That way she can work in unison with all of the heroes that you get out of Labyrinth Store that are Dimensionals as well as the Challenger Store. Now Mulan, Mulan seems to have, again, a lot of utility within AFK Arena. We're seeing her in the Treasure Scramble, also seeing her in some of the other game modes working incredibly well. Kanisa and Rook is one, I believe, again, that might be kind of slipping down the tier. I have him fully built. Don't see a lot of utility for him as of right now but I'm gonna keep him where he is. Same with Vithiel. Vithiel is another one um, that kind of is a buffer, does a lot of damage. They're slowly getting replaced, guys, which is kind of by design of AFK Arena, but both of these heroes that I have fully maxed out. Kinesa and Rook, I'm using within the Matria comp. That is really the, the last thread that is holding that comp um, together with Matria. If Matria moves to another comp or not used, which in the case of the Nightmare Corridor, in the case of the Curse Realm, um, sometimes Matria is not run with the other hypos, which means at that point, Kinesa and Rook is out of those formations as well. Treasure Scramble still running solid. Now, Zorath is another one, guys. Used to be utilized a ton at this point. Um, campaign formations, yes, tower formations definitely being used. Charmizard formation be being used. But again, not um, an incredible amount of utility within other game modes. Frampton, of course, the revitalization of the Matria comp um, still requires a significant build out within the tier list, but still does see gameplay in a lot of different modes, as well as the original version of Taylene. Um, I still do see her run every now and then. Again, it seems like a hero that could be dropping down the tier list, um, but overall still does have some utility with Orthos. Not as much as we've seen in the past, though. So again, I, I think it's at the point where if I was newer to AFK Arena, it is a hero that I would not build for the utility because she requires an incredibly, incredibly high build. I think she is my highest built hero that I have in AFK Arena. Not combat rating power, but the build itself. Now, the original version of Aziz still as a mana battery, as a... um negator of ultimate abilities, still a ton of utility with the original version of Aziz, which is really cool to see. Now, Crisio is still seeing his rise, guys. We're seeing Crisio again in a lot of other game modes, doing best in slot within Nightmare Corridor, also doing a considerable amount of damage in some couple different game modes. 
Going to be interesting with the new tank if we do see any of these um, actually go in different places. Now, Damon, another one running with Ivan that works incredibly well. Um, similar to Grez, similar to Damon, um, Ivan is really changing a lot of different formations, and I want to see exactly where he does end up. And again, I put him S plus in the tier list, guys. I don't know anywhere that you really wouldn't use the hero, and that's one of the viability pieces. Now, Orin, the exact same as we see with Crisio, um, kind of going hand in hand in formations. A lot of utility within best in slot teams within a few different game modes, but again, slowly falling out of utility. Similar to now, essentially, when you think big picture, Oden and Kren used to kind of be before they started losing a little bit of the utility, a little bit of the damage, but Kren and Oden used to be what Orin and Crisio or um, what Crisio are right now. So that is the, the kind of the power creep, guys. As the heroes start coming out and they continue to be newer, the rest of them are kind of running down the tier list. And again, as alts or subs within a lot of different formations, Oden and Kren will absolutely 100% fit the bill. And for a lot of heroes, they do. Similar to Raku, guys. Again, these three, the, the dynamic trio, um, used to be used so much in AFK Arena. At this point, again, they start kind of falling down the tier list. Now we have Merlin in here, still again, a lot of utility when it comes to the support role, a lot of survivability that he brings to the team. Olgath, of course, going back to the Matria comp guys, he is super, super important. He is the primary damage dealer. And we're also seeing him in the Nightmare Corridor in a bunch of other formations. Without Matria, that is the best in slot with the damage dealing. I believe the Nightmare Corridor runs Orin and it runs Olgath together in a formation working incredibly well. Rowan, my favorite hero in AFK Arena, still does have utility with the energy and the Charmizard. We see him in a lot of different formations still working incredibly well. Now, as we work down here, guys, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through the A, B, and C tier. Um, but you can see a lot of these heroes are kind of continuing to decline. And like I said earlier, when you look at a lot of these heroes, um, especially I would say even Trishia, um, we're starting to see a little bit more utility. Some of these heroes are finding their place. When you look at Guineas, when you look at Edwin, um, a lot of these heroes are starting to finally find their place within AFK Arena. I believe Edwin is run with Baden. Um, Guineas, I've seen in a couple formations as of lately. This is an ever work in progress with the tier list, guys. As players find formations and find places that these heroes are used utility-wise, they will start replacing older heroes and they'll start dropping down um, the tier list. But overall, again, still a lot of utility. Even when you get even into the A list um, of the heroes we have in here, these are more of the support role than playing the primary role in some of the team comms that we see. Even a star of the mitigation, the damage, the crowd control, um, the linking from Lorzen, the buffs there from Hodgkin, even looking at, you know, Yennefer still use some parts in the Treasure Scramble. Both of these, again, are going to find their place within AFK Arena. Leonardo for the Crowd Control. Taylene for the Tower. I don't know anywhere else she is used. Um, same with Athalia, both for the Tower. The Five Pull, of course, with Orin. Um, when you look at Tamaris, very strong on the buffing aspect. Does require a considerable build-out. The Five Pull, again, with Skarath. Um, Kayleen, a lot of players say that Kayleen's a little bit under valued but again as we're seeing more heroes come out and as we continue to see more heroes come out we're not seeing the the same utility even rain rain was running with the awakened version of belinda she has since been replaced by ivan so unfortunately she kind of falls a little bit further down the tier list but with that being said if you don't have ivan then rain is the go-to that that's what i mean by a lot of the subs and a lot of the heroes that kind of go in here. The awe ability works incredibly well. The invade, as well as the five pull with the crowd control. We, of course, have Rosaline, which, honestly, guys, I, I would probably keep her here or probably put her in the S- minus for the simple fact of the awakened version of Belinda. Now, Orthos, again, still seeing a little bit of comps with Matria in there. Tarnos, super heavy with PvP. And then Baba Yaga, again, having a little bit of utility in that PvP aspect. So quickly going through the B tier, guys, these are the heroes that used to have a lot of place or they are very, very niche in formations. Um, a lot of them, we see Brutus for the shield. We see um, Soros for the boss damage. But overall, again, 
they, they kind of fill a very niche formation. Most of these heroes, however, are very important when it comes to towers and when it comes to tower progression, even with the bone breaker ability of Warwick, I'm not really seeing Warwick in any formations at all. They've actually released a bunch of other heroes that do have the defense reduction, which he was absolutely known for. Even the, the scaling ability or the immunity that we could get with the infinite living Izold um, has sent, since been kind of replaced by a couple other heroes. Even going into the tier list a little bit further into the C and the D tier, um, and I wanted to cover it all the way down. Guys, we have Flora, and again, these are kind of your tower fillers. Drez was pretty strong. Then we got Crisio. Crisio ultimately replaced Drez. Now we're getting a pretty strong Mauler tank. I think Drez is just going to fall a little bit further down the road. Thorin still here for the Thorin cheese, but again, a majority of these heroes not seeing a lot of utility. Even looking at Valoris, guys, Valoris, similar to Kayleen, not a lot of utility. Maybe only in the tower, if at best. When you get into the D tier, this is more of the fodder heroes that are not really used. Same with the E tier, guys. If, and I, I think again, big picture, if I was a newer player to AFK Arena, even looking at the heroes within the D and E tier, even probably some in the C tier, I would pass. They're not going into wish lists. Um, they're, they're not being summoned for no desire hero summons. A lot of these heroes are just going to continue to kind of tumble into the D and the E tier because, again, they don't have much utility as it is right now. And the utility is just going to continue to drop lower and lower as we see more heroes coming to AFK Arena. But I do want to take a minute, guys, um, and just look at how many heroes we have in AFK Arena. It is incredible. I think we're up to 120 plus, maybe even 130 plus at this point for the tier list. Now we do have the brand new Mauler tank that is coming um, tomorrow, which again, we're gonna have to see the impact of her, but I really feel like it is going to be a strong impact. She's gonna find her place. She brings defensive reduction, guys. She brings buffs. She brings a lot of damage, brings an incredible amount of healing. It, it seems like it is a very well-rounded, much-needed Mauler tank that we are getting with the hero that is coming. So very, very cool. So, all right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the updated tier list for August. And as always, thank you guys for watching.